before starting the the solution to the quantitative aptitude or numerical ability sections uh, questions okay new questions which tcs has uploaded okay in the sample test we'll first take a look at the general instructions which are there they are very important first of all the test is of 120 minutes okay clock will be set at the server and uh, whenever the timer reaches zero there will be a countdown timer at the right hand side of the corner the examination will end by itself and you won't be required to end or submit the exam okay and the final level submit button will be enabled only at the end of the exam fine also regarding answering a question what are the instructions are that procedure for answering a multiple choice question you to save your answer you must click on save and next to select your answer click on the button on one of the options and to deselect the chosen option click on the button again okay whatever option you have chosen click on it again it will get deselected or you can click on clear response button fine and to change your chosen answer click on the button of another option so if there are like two three to four uh, since four options are there if you choose this you if you don't want this one you want this one click directly on this one this will get eliminated okay this uh, this would get deselected now you will be asked for confirmation whether you want to proceed to the next question because revisiting to the already answered question is not allowed so even if you leave a question and try to move ahead okay there is a chance you might not be able to revisit so whatever question is there try to attempt it as it is okay immediately at that point of time only now navigating to a question to navigate to a question when you click on save and next on the question it will automatically take you to the next question you need to take the question in order as they appear you cannot skip a question and revisit it later okay or go to a question of your choice next question will be displayed very important next question will be displayed only when you press save and next on your current question now navigating through sections sections in this question paper are displayed on the top bar of the screen section you are currently viewing is highlighted candidates are expected to attempt sections in the predefined order as they appear on the screen only revisiting across the sections is not allowed so if say quant is first then verbal and if then logical is there then you have to appear the questions in the same order you cannot go for verbal first then quant or something like that okay you have to appear quant first then verbal automatically will start and then logical will start so you need to be careful all the sections are limit time limit bound okay what does this mean that means quant if quant is like we are going to see what the time limit is say if quant whatever time limit is they're given for quant so when and uh, when that gets over then only you can move to the next section also you have to finish the entire quant in that given time limit otherwise you will automatically move to the next section and you will not be able to finish the uh, quant section okay candidates can move to the next section only after the specified time limit for the section is completed irrespective of even if they complete answering earlier so even if you finish this section earlier still you have to wait unless and until the timer goes off and timer for this section goes off and you move to the next question in case all the questions are not answered in the time given for the section you will be forced submitted for that section so out of say 10 questions you attempt only 8 okay and two are still remaining automatically when the timer ends this section will get submitted fine now let uh, apart from this there is another uh, two important things that i'll tell later on on the next slide first we'll take a look at subject specific instructions like for example there will be numerical ability section 26 questions will be there and 40 minutes would be given to complete the 20 complete these 26 questions for verbal ability 24 questions and 30 minutes are given reasoning ability 30 questions and 50 minutes now these time limit okay so whatever is there keep this time limit in mind there will there is going to be a stopwatch or a timer over here now very important thing calculator is available okay online calculator over here okay you can see a symbol over here of a calculator that is available you can click on it you get a small calculator it is not a scientific calculator it is a very simple calculator which can be used for basic multiplication division or maximum the square root sign okay you can check out the sample test it uh, you can take a look at the calculator there is a small notepad over here okay notepad symbol when you click on it a small notepad opens you can write anything rough over here once you click the clear button over here everything gets erased so if you write something over here and click the click the cross button okay and next time again when you open the notepad this is going to be there okay it won't erase unless and until you press the clear button this is not going to get erased this is for noting down something okay or any calculation or something like that whatever is there you can note it down over here calculator might be useful for some of them for calculation but 
प्लीज बी वेर इट इज नॉट अ साइंटिफिक कैलकुलेटर यू नीड टू फाइंड सम ऑफ द लाइक स्क्वेयर रूट आर फाइन बट क्यूब रूट और समथिंग लाइक दैट और लॉग और समथिंग लाइक दैट दैट यू हैव टू डू इट ऑन योर ओन सो प्रैक्टिस विद पेन एंड पेपर रिगार्डिंग कैलकुलेशन ओके लेट्स नाउ अपार्ट अपार्ट फ्रॉम द इंस्ट्रक्शन लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द सोल्यूशन फॉर द क्वेश्चन मैं इन द सैंपल न्यू सैंपल टेस्ट ऑफ टीसीएस इन क्यू टी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन this question has been repeated rather it is there in the previous tcs sample paper okay and a separate video has been uploaded regarding the uh, solutions for the previous questions of the sample paper five questions were there previously in the previous sample test a video separate video has been uploaded you can check that out okay so we'll move on to the new questions the ratio of ages in years of a and b 9 years ago was 23 is to 12 The ratio of their ages after 15 years will be 35 is to 24. What is the ratio of present ages of A and B? So now problem is we don't know present ages. We want to find the ratio of the present ages. So what we are going to go is we are going to go nine years ago. Okay, at that time ratio of age of A is to B was 23 is to 12. Since this is the ratio, it is not the actual age. We we are going to consider a common factor x that is going to give the actual age of A as 23 x years. and of b as 12 x years okay after 9 years that is the present time okay what will be the age of a age of a is going to be 23 x plus 9 years and age of b is going to be 12 x years plus 9 years okay so this is the present ages of a and b years years now the ratio of the ages after 15 years so from this point that is from present point i am going ahead 15 years So now the age of A is going to be twenty three x plus nine plus fifteen. That is going to be twenty three x plus. Uh, it comes out to be what fifty nine twenty four. Okay, and for B it is twelve x plus nine plus fifteen. That is going to be twelve x plus twenty four years. Okay, and they have given after fifteen years the ratio of ages is thirty five to twenty four. So what we have over here is twenty three x plus twenty four upon twelve x plus twenty four. Is going to be thirty five upon twenty four. So let's multiply. What you are going to get is twenty three x into twenty four plus twenty four square would be equal to thirty five into twelve x plus thirty five into twenty four. Do not multiply right now. Okay, we can simplify it. Take all the x on the left hand side. What you are going to get is twenty three x twelve x. So over here twenty four is there. So I'll have twenty three x into twenty four minus thirty five into twelve x. Would be equal to 35 into 24 plus 24 square. Now I can take 12x common, so I am going to have 12x over here. What I am going to uh, be remained with 2 and 23. That comes out to be 46 minus 35 remains over here. Then I'll take 24 common over here. I'll have 35 minus 24. Okay, this is not plus. This is minus. Okay, minus 24. So 46 minus 35 comes out to be 11. Okay. 12. So this 12 twos are gets cancelled over here. So what I have is 11x over here, and 35 minus 24 is again 11. Okay, 11 into 2 is 22. So x comes out to be 2. Fine. Now we have to find out the ratio of the present ages. 23 into 2 is 46 plus 9. So what we are going to have the present age of a is 23x plus 9. That is 46 plus 9 is 55. Okay, and of age of b is 12x. That is 12 twos are 24. Plus nine, six plus three is thirty-three. So ratio is fifty-five by thirty-three. Eleven fives are eleven threes are. Answer comes out to be five is to three. Okay, so answer is option B. Now you might think this is a really big sum, but if you take a look at the time limit, let's go on to the previous slides and take a look at the time limit. Over here, if you see numerical ability, twenty-six questions, forty minutes are there. So if you try to calculate twenty-six by forty, that is two uh, four tens are. Four six zar twenty four point six point five. Okay, uh, so it is like over here. Oh, okay, twenty six minutes. Oh, sorry, forty by twenty six. Really sorry. Okay, uh, so it is by forty by twenty six. So twenty by thirteen. That comes out to be one point something. Okay, seventy. Uh, seventy remains. Ah, uh, one point five. Around one minute. Okay, and twenty five seconds. Something like that. You get. So since the time limit is more, there is a chance that the question might be slightly lengthy. It is not that difficult. It is easy. Only thing is because of the calculations, you might get afraid. Okay, it's really difficult and everything. But there's an online calculator. Try to avoid the minimize or uh, try to minimize the use of calculator because what is going to happen? You have to click over there, 
then if you are not able to use the keyboard if you have to uh, every time click on the buttons it is going to be difficult to calculate quickly so such kind of tricks you can use of simplification to get the answer quickly on pen and paper okay let's move on to the next question renu bought 28 articles for 1540 rupees See, so she sold them at a profit equal to the selling price of six articles. How many articles did she sell for INR 840? Okay, so over here, the cost price of one article, okay, 28 articles were bought for 1540 rupees. So cost price of one article will be what? Very easily, we'll calculate 1540 divided by 28. Now, I don't know the table of uh, 28. So I know of like seven, seven fours are and 7 twos are 14, 14 to 20, that comes out to be 55 rupees, cost price of one article. Now she sold them, them means all the 28 articles at a profit equal to selling price of six articles. I don't know the selling price of every article. Let the selling price of every article be of one article, okay? Selling price of one article be X rupees. So selling price of 28 articles, what it would be? 28 X rupees, okay, 28 articles. Selling price of six articles would be what six x rupees fine now she sold them at a profit equal to the selling price of six articles what is the meaning of profit profit is selling price minus cost price now she has sold all the 28 of them what is selling price of 28 of them 28 x what is the cost price of 28 of them 55 into 28 that comes out to be 1540 okay there was actually no need to calculate even the cost price but still okay fine this is 28x minus 15.40. But this profit is equal to the selling price of 6 articles. So 6x will be equal to 28x minus 15.40. 15.40 comes out to be 28x minus 6 is 22x. 11 twos are 11 ones are 11. 44 fours are 140. X comes out to be 70. Okay. Uh, so this is the selling price of the article. Okay. Cost price is what? How many articles did she sell for 840? Okay, we don't even need cost price. Selling price is what? 70 rupees. Total money she earned is 840 rupees. So let us find out how many she sold. Okay, total money she earned is 840 rupees. For 70 rupees, okay, 70 rupees one article is there. So total how many articles are sold? 7 ones are 7 ones are 7, 14, 12. 12 articles have been sold by her. Option B is the answer. Okay. The difference between the outer and inner surfaces of a right circular metallic pipe 14 cm long is 176 cm square. If the pipe is made of 396 cm cube metal, the sum of outer and inner radii in centimeter is, take pi equal to 22 by 7. Now this is a pipe, okay, I am taking a cross section of the pipe, right. So now what is happening, a pipe is like this, so it is sort of a cylinder. So outer and inner surfaces, okay, difference between outer and inner surfaces is given in what? Centimeter square. That means they are talking about outer and inner surface areas, okay. Surface area, okay, I'll write over here, sorry. Surface area of a cylinder is given by 2 pi r h, okay, h is the height, which is the length over here and r is the radius. So outer surface area, okay, minus inner surface area. Okay, that we have to find out. So outer surface area will be 2 into pi into what is the height? 14 centimeters into what is the outside radius? We don't know. Let it be r minus 2 pi into 14. What is the inner radius? We don't know. Let it be small r. So this radius, this is the cross section of the pipe. This is capital R and this is small r. Okay, now what we are going to get over here? Difference is 176 centimeters square. So that comes out to be 2 pi into 14 is common r minus r. So R minus R is going to be 176 upon 2 into 22 by 7 into 40. So 7 twos are, okay, and 22 into, uh, this comes out to be 8. 2 fours are, 2 twos are. So R minus R comes out to be 2. This is the first equation, okay. 22 into 8 comes out to be 176. Now, this is the first equation. Next thing what they have given, if the pipe is made of 396 centimeter cube of metal, it means that this part which is there, this is the hollow part inside smaller circle, but this part is comprising of metal. So what it means is volume of the pipe or volume of the outer section, okay, outer radius section minus volume of the inner hollowness, okay, inner hollow part which is there is going to be the total metal in the pipe, okay. Now volume of a cylinder, I'll write over here, volume of a cylinder 
is given by what? This is a cylinder really sorry for the handwriting. Volume of the cylinder is given by the formula pi r square h. Okay. Pi r square h where h is the height or the length. Okay. 14 centimeters r is the radius. Now what we know pipe is made of 396 centimeter cube metal. So this part which is there shaded which I am shading. This is the metal part. So how can we get it? Volume of the outer pipe minus volume of the inner hollow pipe. Okay. That is nothing but the amount of metal. Okay. When you subtract the volumes, you get the amount of metal over there. So over here, amount of metal is 396 centimeter cube will be equal to pi into capital radius R square into height is 14. Okay. Minus or length is 14 pi small radius R square into length is 14. So what do we get over here is R square minus R square and I'll take 14 pi common over here will be equal to 396. So R square minus R square is going to be 396 divided by 14 into 22 by 7. 7 twos are okay. 2 ones are 2 19. 2 nines are 18 16. 198 upon 2. So R square can be written as R square minus R square can be written as R plus R into R minus R would be equal to 198 divided by 22. Now R minus R we already know is 2. So what we get is R plus R multiplied by 2 will be equal to 198 divided by 22. So 11 twos are 11 ones are 11 88 18 are 2 into 9. R plus R comes out to be 9. R plus R is equal to 9 divided by 2. Okay. So now what we have over here is R plus R is equal to 4.5. Okay. Centimeter. So answer is option A. The cost of 5 chairs and 2 tables is 5820 rupees and the cost of 2 chairs and 1 table is 2640 rupees. The cost of 1 table is what percent more than the cost of 2 chairs nearest to an integer. Let the cost of 1 table be rupees T and the cost of 1 chair be rupees C. Now the cost of 5 chairs and 2 tables comes out to be 5820 rupees. Okay. And cost of 2 chairs and 1 table. Okay. Comes out to be 2640. So we will eliminate T from over here. So for that what we are going to do? We are going to multiply this equation by 2. So we are going to get 4C plus 2T. That is 2640 into 2 comes out to be 5280. Okay. Now this is equation 1. Equation 2, we'll subtract equation 2 from equation 1. So minus, minus, minus. Okay. So this gets cancelled out. 5C minus 4C comes out to be C. And 500 and uh, 5820 minus 5280 comes out to be rupees 540. This is the cost of a chair. Okay. Let's put this value into this equation. So 2 into 540 comes out to be what? 1080 plus the cost of one table will be equal to 2640. From here, we are going to get the cost of table as rupees 1560. This is the cost of one table. This is the cost of one chair. Now we have to find out the cost of one table is what percent more than the cost of two chairs. Cost of one chair is this much. Cost of two chairs is going to be what? 540 into 2. That comes out to be 1080 rupees. Fine. How much is the cost of one table more than cost of two chairs? Table minus two chairs. That is going to be 1560 minus 1080 that comes out to be uh, around 480 rupees. Okay. 480. Yes. Uh, that is 80 plus 80, 60. Yes. 480 rupees. This much is the cost of one table more than the cost of two chairs. Okay. But we want to convert it into percentage. What percent more? Okay. More we have found out 480 rupees. What percentage more? So let's convert this into percentage. So I'll multiply by 100 to convert into percentage. But some comparison should be there in the denominator more than the cost of two chairs. So what is the cost of two chairs? 1080. So I'll put that into the denominator. Okay. So that gets cancelled out over here. And what you're going to have is 4800. Okay. Divided by 108. So I am going to divide everything by 4. 4 ones are 2s are 1200. Divided by 4 2s are 8. 28, 27. Then 3 into 400. 3 into 9. That comes out to be 9 fours are 30, uh, 9 fours are 36. Then 4 is the remainder. 9 fours are 36, 44.444. That comes out to be option A as the answer. Let X be the median of this data. Okay. 
if 16 and 23 are replaced by 30 and 32 respectively in the data then y be the median of the resulting data what is the value of 3x minus 2y so first is x is the median of this data so first we'll arrange this in the ascending order let's see what it is ascending order 9 then 15 is going to come then we are going to have 16 then we are going to have 20 then 23 then 26 then okay 28 is there then 32 33 is there 34 is there 35 and 43 okay so how many terms are there 3 6 9 12 there are 12 terms okay n is equal to 12 which is even so the median x is going to be what 3 3 6 3 9 and 12 the middle median is going to be the mean of median is going to be the mean of the middle two terms so these are the middle two terms this is the sixth term and this is the seventh term how did we get it now when the total number of terms are even okay if n is even then the mean is given by n divided as the sorry the median is given by the mean of n by 2 and n by 2 plus one term okay mean of these two terms would be the answer so 12 divided by 2 the sixth term and uh, 6 plus 1 seventh term average or mean of these two terms is going to give us the median so x is equal to median okay will be equal to what is it what is 26 and 27 what 26 plus 28 sorry not 26 and 27 26 plus 28 divided by 2 comes out to be 27 27 is the median okay value of x is 27 now if 16 and 23 are replaced by 30 and 32 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to erase this 16 and I'm going to replace it with 30. If I replace it with 30, 30 is going to come over here in between these two. Okay, we are arranging everything in ascending order. 23 is replaced by 32. So I'll cancel out 23. I'll replace it with 32. Again, 32 comes over here between 32 and 33. Okay, it will come over here or 30 and 32 you can write simultaneously. It doesn't matter. Now what happens is, then y be the median of the resulting. Now two numbers are replaced by two numbers. So n remains even. Again, if n is even, what is the median? Median is going to be what? Median is going to be the mean of n by 2th term and n by 2 plus 1th term. 6th and 7th term. So let's count the 6th and 7th term. 1st term, 2nd term, 3rd term, 4th term, 5th term, 6th term and 7th term. So now n by 2th term which is there, it comes out to be uh, 30 and 32. Okay, n by 2 term, n by 2th term comes out to be 30th, 30 and n by 2 plus 1th term comes out to be 32. So what is the mean of this? Y, median. Okay, median will be the mean of 30 and 32. That is going to be 30 plus 32 by 2. Direct observation also we can tell it is 31. Okay, now we have to find the value of what is 3x minus 2y. So that is 3x minus 2y is going to be 3 into 27 minus 2 into 31 okay so 67 uh, 60 it comes out to be 81 over here minus 2 into 31 is 62 that comes out to be 19 okay option d is the answer the difference 3x minus 2y value comes out to be 19 very easy you just have to find the median okay arrange everything in ascending order get the median for even numbers median is nothing but mean of the middle two numbers that is n by 2 and n by 2 plus 1 sixth and seventh number okay five over here five over here sixth and seventh number Me mean of these two numbers now when you change these two numbers by these two numbers okay you have to arrange it in the ascending order only so in this order only just try to eliminate these and add these two and then find the sixth and seventh number again now it comes out to be 30 and 32 fine you are going to get the answer as 19 as the value of 3x minus 2y Study the following table and answer the question. Revenue in INR lakhs of a company ABC from the sale of its four products P, Q, R and S in six years is given. Okay. So uh, four products for six years is given from 2013 to 2008 and four products are P, Q, R and S. Okay. And sale has been given for those products, these numbers. Total revenue of the company from the sale of product Q in 2015 and 2018 and from sale of product S in 2015 is approximately what percentage less than the total revenue from the sale of product P in 2014 and 2017 and product R in 2013 and 2014. Okay, this is a big question. So what we are going to do is we are going to go step by step. Total revenue of the company from sale of product Q in 2015 and 2017 
where 2015-2018. Okay, both. So Q is over here. 2015 is this. 2018 is this. So what is the total sale of the product over here? 176 plus 184. Okay, 176 plus 184 that comes out to be 360. Fine. Product and from the pro from the sale of product S. So S also has to be added into it. S in 2015 what is the product 192 in 2015 okay 192 i am going to add this is the sale of 2000 uh, s in 2015 so what do i get over here 251456 okay 600 uh, not 345 sorry 552 comes out to be the total sale okay so the first section is given sale of product from here to here value comes out to be 552 now next is approximately what percentage less than First, we'll find out less and then we'll find out a percentage. Less than, let's check this section. Total revenue from sale of product P in 2014 and 17. Product P is there, 2014 and 2017 we have to check. So, 168, okay, 192. 2014 and 2017 and product R in 13 and 14. So, product R in say 13 and 14 okay so that comes out to be 183 and 177 okay so when we add 10 10 plus 10 is 20 okay 2 6 plus 2 is 8 8 plus 8 is 16 16 plus 9 25 plus 7 is 32 so 3 goes over here 3 4 5 6 7 720 this is the sale of the second part sale of the first part is 552 first we have to find out the first part is how much less so 720 minus 552 that is going to give us how much? Let us see. Uh, 10 minus 2 is 8. 11 minus 5 is 6. And 6 minus 5 is 1. 168 is less. We have to convert it into percentage. So, 168 multiplied by 100. Less than. Since we want percentage, there has to be something in denominator. Less than the second part of revenue that is 720. Okay. Second part of the revenue. So, what we can do is we can cancel this out and we can have 1680 divided by 72 this can be this is divisible by 4 4 2 0 and 4 ones are 4 into 18 again this is divisible by 2 210 divided by 9 so what you are going to get over here is 9 twos are 18 okay and 30 9 threes are 27 23 point something so answer comes out to be option a 23 point something percent answer comes out to be option a 23.3 percent okay we have already checked this in our previous video, the first video of TCS sample questions. Take a look at uh, that video for getting the solution for this question. The ratio of acid and water in a 45 liter solution of acid and water is 5 is to 4. In this solution, 15 liters of water is added. Now in 144 ml of the resulting solution, 52 ml acid is mixed. What is the ratio of water and acid in the final solution? Very easy question. Total solution is 45 liters. Okay. It has acid and water in the ratio 5 is to 4. So, how much acid is there? 5 upon 5 plus 4. Okay. Into 45. That comes out to be 25 liters. Okay. Because 5 plus 4 is 9. 45 by 9 is 5. 5 is 25 liters. This is the amount of acid. So, how much is the amount of water? Very easy. 45 liter minus 25 liter comes out to be 20 liters. Okay. This is the amount of water initially. Now 15 liters of water is added, fine. So now 20 liter water initially plus 15 liters. So total it becomes 35 liters of water, fine. Now what happens over here is total solution, 35 liter water is there, 25 liter acid is there. So now the total solution is 60 liters, okay. This is the mixture, resultant mixture of 60 liters. Now what they are saying is in the 144 ml of the resulting solution. So I have taken 144 ml resulting solution, okay. This resulting solution will have acid to water in what ratio? Let us check out. This 60 liter mixture which we have got, it has water to acid or acid to water ratio of, let us check out, acid to water ratio will be 25 is to 35 divided by 5 throughout, we are going to get 5 is to 7, okay. So this is the ratio of acid to water. So this 144 ml of the mixture is going to have the same acid to water ratio, 5 is to 7. So let us try to find out how much is the acid, okay. Let us try to find out how much is the acid. Very easy, 5 upon 5 plus 7 
into 144 because we are taking only 144 ml of the resulting solution they have taken now in 144 ml of the resulting solution okay so we are going to have 5 into upon 12 into 144 so 12 12 are 5 12 are 60 ml acid is there so out of 144 ml 60 ml is acid okay i found it out over here so how much is remaining 144 minus 60 84 ml water is there okay now in the 144 ml resulting solution 52 ml acid is mixed so add now 52 ml acid to this what is the now amount of acid over here 60 plus 52 102 ml is the acid how much is the water 84 ml is the water what we have to find out is ratio of water to acid in the final solution water 84 ml acid 112 ml okay what is uh, this gets cancelled out we have to find the ratio okay water to acid so 12 uh, not 12 uh, 4 4 2s are 4 1s are and 4 2s are 8 32 8s are 7 3s are 7 4s are so water to acid ratio comes out to be 3 is to 4 answer is option c A and B together can do a certain work in 16 days, whereas B and C together can do it in 20 days. If A is twice as good a workman as C, then B alone can do the same work in. Now, what is given is that if A is twice as good a workman as C, that means A is double efficient than C, that means A takes half the time of C. So, if A is going to take X days to complete the entire work alone, okay, then C is going to take 2X days. Okay, now what we are going to do is we'll just invert it and we are going to get 1 by x. We'll invert it and we are going to get 1 by x. Now what is 1 by x and 1 by 2x? These are 1 day works of A and C. Okay, I'll write over here. 1 day works. Just on inverting you get the answer. Okay, it's very easy by this way. Now next, A and B together can do a certain work in 16 days. So A plus B together can complete the entire work in 16 days. Okay just invert it 1 by 16 this becomes the one day work of a and b together and b and c can together complete the entire work in 20 days fine so just inverted you are going to get 1 by 20 as the total amount of work done by b and c in a single day this is also a one day work okay both of them now we already know b plus c is equal to 1 by 20 okay one day work which is there if b and c work for a single day this is the amount of work that they are going to do. But C does 1 by 26, uh, 1 by 2x amount of work in a single day. B plus 1 by 2x will be equal to 1 by 20. So B is going to be 1 upon 20 minus 1 upon 2x. On the other hand, A and B together complete in a single day. Okay, 1 by 16 amount of work. But we already know A completes 1 by x amount of work in a single day. So B is going to be 1 by 16 minus 1 by x. Now we are going to equate both these equations. What are you going to get? 1 by 20 minus 1 by 2x would be equal to 1 by 16 minus 1 by x. So I'll have 1 by x minus 1 by 2x is going to be 1 by 16 minus 1 by 20. So uh, here the uh, LCM is 2x. So 2 minus 1 is 1 that would be equal to LCM over here comes out to be 16 now 5 is 80. Okay. And 16 5 is 5 minus 24 is 1. 1 by 80. X comes out to be 40. 40 days that means a completes the entire work alone in 40 days and c completes the entire work alone in 80 days now what they want b alone can do the same work in very easy to find out we have got the value of x as 40 okay now already we know this okay and this put into any equation i'll put it over here so b is going to be what 1 by 16 minus 1 by 40 okay now the lcm is going to be 80 again over here fine and it is going to be 16 5 is 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 by 80. Okay, this is the amount of work done by B in one day. Amount of work done by B in one day is 3 by 80. So, total number of days taken by B to complete the entire work is just inverted 80 by 3 days. So, let's convert it into mixed fraction 3 2s are 6, then 20 3 6s are 18, 2 by 3 days. Okay, 26 2 by 3 days that is option D. A trader gains 25% by selling an article at a discount of 35% on its marked price. If the cost price of the article increases by 28%, what discount percent should he now give on the same marked price to get the same profit percentage as above? 
now this is uh this looks complicated but actually it is very easy question a trader gains 25 percent by selling an article at a discount of 35 percent on its marked price now i don't know the cost price of the article let the cost price of the article be 100 rupees okay forget about mark price and everything cost price is 100 rupees so what is the profit given over here 25 percent correct so the selling price is going to be what 125 rupees but this selling price is of this article selling an article it is after a discount of 35 percent on the marked price so take a look over here if 100 rupees is the marked price okay and you give a discount of 35 percent so now the price will decrease by 35 so now the price is what 65 rupees so that means the final price is 65 percent of the marked price how let us see 65 upon marked price is 100 into 100 okay so that is nothing but 65 percent of the marked price so discount of 35 percent is given so the final selling price which is there it is 65 percent of the marked price so 125 is 65 percent of the marked price okay let marked price be m so what is the value of the marked price it is going to be 125 into 100 divided by 65 okay so 5 into 13 5 into 25 so that comes out to be 2500 upon 13 rupees so we'll keep it as it is right now now what they have given is that if the cost price of the article increases by 28 percent so now the cost price is 128 rupees okay so now they want the same profit of 25 percent it is given over here profit percentage same as before to get the same profit percentage as before to get a profit of 25 percent we have to increase this price by 25 percent so it will be 1.25 into 128 okay that comes out to be rupees 160 this is now the selling price already we know the marked price is this this is the selling price when you calculate this what you are going to get is 192 point something okay so we will take it as 192 rupees you can use the calculator over here which is given okay tcs very quickly to get the answer so now this is the marked price okay if you are not good with calculations then i am saying this is the marked price this is the selling price what is the profit or uh, what is the discount given not profit discount discount will be equal to marked price minus the selling price it is 192 minus 160 that is rupees 32 okay so now we have to find out how much discount should be given discount is always given on the marked price please remember always on the marked price so when we want to find out percentage discount it will be discount divided by the marked price which is 192 into 100 okay so that on calculating over here what you are going to get is 16 over here and uh, 2 9s are 18 12 96 then 4 4s are 4 2s are 8 6 uh, 4 2s are 8 16 24 4 by 6 100 divided by 6 that is going to be 6 1s are 6 40 6 6s are 36 0.66 percent so that comes out to be around 16.8 percent now why they are getting 0.8 and why i am getting 0.66 because over here the value is 192 point something but i have taken it round figure as 192 okay that is the reason there is a difference in this uh okay otherwise it would have been 16.8 a sum of x is divided between a b c and d such that the ratio of shares of a and b is 9 is to 5 C's share is 70% of B's share and the ratio of the share of D to the combined share of B and C is 1 is to 3. If the share of A is INR 999, then the value of X is. Now, A upon B share, what is given? It is 9 by 5. But share of A, we already know, 999. So, what is the share of B? 9 into triple 1. So, share of B is going to be 555 5, 5 rupees. Okay, B I have calculated. Let's find out the share of C. It is 70% of B share. 70% of B share that is 555. That is going to be what? 70 upon 100 into 555. So I'm cancelling out. Okay. And what you're going to get over here is on using the calculator, you can directly get 388.5 rupees. Okay. But what I would suggest is try to multiply. Even multiplication is very easy. Okay. 7 into 5, 7 into 5, 7 into 5, whatever it is there. And just divide by 10 you have to do. But C's share we get as 388.5 rupees. Okay. Now, what is given is ratio of the share of D to the combined share of B and C. B plus C is given as 1 upon 3. Okay. So, D's share to what is uh, B's share 555. Five, five, plus 388.5 so 
so on addition what you are going to get is do not use the calculator for this what you are going to get is d will be equal to this addition i am going to take in the numerator so 555 so that comes out to be 943.5 rupees divided by 3 that comes out to be 314.5 rupees okay so this is a share of d b this is a share of c and a already we know so on adding everything let us see what we get so we have 999555 okay 388.5 and 314.5 so this comes out to be total 1 so 9 comes out 10 15 19 plus 8 is 27 only one number ends in 7 answer is option b even if you check out over here uh, 1000 1500 1800 2100 something would be the answer which the closest answer is 2257 no need to add completely directly at the end we get 7 okay only one option is ending with 7 so mark that as the answer this numerical we have already seen in the previous video so you can check that out okay for the solution the income of a is 70 percent of the income of b and the expenditure of b is 20 percent less than the expenditure of a if expenditure of a is equal to 60 percent of b's income what is the ratio of savings of a and b very easy let the income of b let it be 100 rupees okay so what will be the income of a 70% of B that is 70 rupees correct now expenditure of A expenditure of A is 60% of B's income 60% of 100 rupees that is going to be rupees 60 and expenditure of B is 20% less than the expenditure of A that means see 20% less than the expenditure of A B's expenditure is 20% less than that of a ea that means b's expenditure is 80 percent of the a's expenditure okay so it would be 80 percent of 60 that comes out to be 80 upon 100 into 60 86 are 48 so expenditure of b is 48 rupees so now savings very easy say what is income is equal to expenditure plus savings so saving is going to be income minus expenditure so what is the saving of a it is going to be income of A that is 70 minus expenditure of A 60 and savings of B is going to be income of B minus expenditure of B. So that is going to be 10 upon 52 that is 5 upon 26. So the ratio of savings of A and B is 5 is to 26 option A. What is the mean of mode and median of the given data? So for this given data, we will find mode, we will find median and then we will find the average or the mean of both of these. Over here, if you observe carefully, 6 appears once, twice and thrice. 6 comes over here three times. Okay. So 6 is the mode over here. Okay. Very easily you can observe. Rest numbers are not that much. So now we have to find the median. For this, we have to arrange everything in the ascending order. Okay. So what I am going to do is first is 1, 2 ones are there. So 1 and 1 then 1 uh, then there is 1 2 so i'll write 2 over here then there is like 3 and 3 3 3 then two fours are there again 4 4 then there is a 5 5 two fives are there 6 are 3 so i'm going to write that then 7 uh, so 6 i'll cancel out 6 6 6 so what is the remaining 7 are 2 7 7 8 are 2 and 9 is 1 8 are 2 and 9 are 2 sorry 9 are also 2 so let us count the total numbers over here okay what it is 3 6 9 12 15 18 okay it comes out to be round about 18 uh, is it 18 let me check out uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 yes okay it is 18 in total so n is 18 which is even okay so the median which is going to be there it is going to be mean of n by 2 th term and n by 2 plus 1 th term so n by 2 is like 18 by 2 that is 9th term okay and the 10th term fine mean of these two is going to be the median so what is the 9th term this is the 9th term and this is the 10th term so what is the mean of this so mean is going to be 5 plus 6 divided by 2 11 by 2 that is going to be 5.5 .5, okay this is the median i'll write over here median now i have to find the average of the median and the mode so mean 
final mean, whatever the answer we need is 6 plus 5.5 divided by 2. That comes out to be 11.5 divided by 2. That is 5.75. Okay. Answer is option B. In a company, 58% of the employees are males and rest are females. 48% of the employees are graduates of which 33 1 by 3% are females. Among females, the percentage of those who are not graduates is correct to one decimal place. Very easy. Let the company have 100 employees. Okay. Total 100 employees. Out of that, how many males are there? 58% that is 58 are males and 42 are females. Now, out of the 100 employees, 48 are graduates. Fine. And the rest are like not graduates. Now, out of the 48% employees who are graduates, 33 1 by 3% are males. What is 33 1 by 3%? It 33 1 by 3% is 100 by 3%. That is nothing but one third, very famous fraction. Okay. So, one third of these 48 are graduates. So, total number of graduates are what? Oh, sorry, these are total number of graduates, 48 in the company. Out of that, one third are males. So, male graduates are one third of 48. Okay. That comes out to be 16. So, how many female graduates are there? These are, uh, okay, how many female graduates? Now, this 48, I, what I'll do is I'll spread into 2. Male graduates are 16. So, female graduates are 48 minus 16, 32. Okay, total among the females, total females are 42. Out of 42 females, percentage of those who are not graduates, graduates are 32. Not graduates are 10. How did I get 10? 42 total females out of that 20, 32 are graduates. So, females who are not graduates are 10. We have to find the percentage of this. Why did I take 42 in the denominator and not the total employees? Among females, they are asking. So, among females is total females are 42. Among them, 10 are not graduates. Let's find the percentage for that. So, what we are going to have is 1000, okay, divided by 42. That is 500 divided by 21. So, that comes out to be 21 twos are 40, uh, 42, 80, 21 threes are or uh, that is 63, 17. So, 23 point something is the answer. Answer comes out to be option A. When 5075358482782 and are divided by the greatest number D, the remainder in each case is R. Then what is the value of 3D minus 2R? Now, whenever we want to find the greatest number, that means we have to find the HCF or the GCD. But HCF of which numbers? Okay. When we don't know the remainder, okay, when remainder is unknown, there is a trick to this. Okay, let us see what the trick is. You have to go round robin, that is this number minus this number, okay, then this number minus this number and this number minus this number. Forget the negative sign completely, okay, do not consider negative sign. So, for, first what you are going to have is 5075 minus 3584. This is going to give you 1491, then 3584 minus 2732. This is going to give you 852. 2732 minus 5075. This is going to give you minus 2343. But we have to ignore the negative sign. Now we have to find the HCF okay, or GCD of these three numbers. Let us try to find it out. 14, 91, 80, 852 and 2343. Now, all of them are divisible by 3. So, 3, 4s are 12, 3, uh, 12, okay, 29, 3, 9s are 27, 21, okay, 3, 2s are 6, 15 is, uh, 3, 2s are 6, 25, 3, 8s are 24, 12, 3, 4s are 12, then 3, 7s are 21, 14, 3, 2s are, uh, no, 21, then 24, okay, 3, again, 7s are, comes out to be, uh, no, 3, 8s are 24 and 1, 781, this is. Now, this entire thing, it is difficult to find what it is divisible by, but if you carefully see, it is 7 and 4, okay? So, again, it is 7 and 7. This is 7 square and this is 7. So, if this must be divisible by 7, but divisible by 7 by what? 71, okay? But this is not divisible by 7, but this is divisible by 71. So, we can have 71 into 7s are 497, 79 in, 71 into 4s are 284 and 71 into 11s are 781. So, the G, C, D, H, C, F, there is nothing common between these three numbers, so forget it. So, the H, C, F comes out to be 3 into 71, that comes out to be 3 ones are 3, 3 sevens are 21. 213 is the greatest number D, okay, this comes out to be D, which when divide, uh, dividing 
these three numbers okay this one this one and this one it is going to get us the same remainder r let us find the remainder r let's take the smaller value 2732 okay let's divide it by 213 so now definitely we know 213 into 10 comes out to be 2130 okay and number is greater than that like around about 600 greater okay so we can try this as 213 into 13 okay but even if it is 213 into 13 it is 639 which goes above this 32 okay so it must be 12 213 into 12 let's try out 2130 and 12 213 into 2 is 426 so i'll add 426 over here 6 3 plus 2 is 5 5 2 and i have to subtract it from 2732 2556 5, okay 213 12 are 2556 5, and the remainder that is going to be let us see what it is 12 minus 6 is 6 and 2 12 minus 5 is 7 and 6 minus 5 is 1 2 minus 2 is 0 176 is the remainder this is the value of r so now we want is 3d minus 2r that is going to be 3 into 213 minus 2 into 176 so 3 into 213 comes out to be 639 minus 2 into 176 is 352 the subtraction comes out to be 287 that is option b this numerical we have already seen in uh, the previous video okay earlier video of tc uh, old tcs sample test okay the first one which was given so to for the solution of this you can check out that video pipes a and b can fill an empty tank in 40 minutes and 60 minutes respectively and pipe c alone can empty full tank in x minutes all the three pipes are opened for 24 minutes and then c is closed a and b together fill the tank in another 16 minutes what is the value of x very easy question pipe a can fill the entire tank in 40 minutes so in a single minute how much tank is filled by tank a uh, pipe a 1 by 40 okay this is the one minute work okay of pipe a as well as b we are going to write over here 60 minutes in 60 minutes it fills the entire tank so in a single minute it fills 1 by 60 amount of tank c empties the entire tank in x minutes okay so in a single minute it empties 1 by x amount of the tank now what happens is that all three pipes are open for 24 minutes and then c is closed so c is closed after 24 minutes afterwards a and b only these two pipes are on a and b together fill the tank in 16 minutes okay another 16 minutes so after 24 minutes further 60 minutes are required now in 16 minutes okay pay attention in 16 minutes how much tank is filled by a and b a in 1 minute fills 1 by 40 okay so in 16 minutes into 16 b fills 1 by 60 so in 16 minutes it is this is in 1 minute okay 1 by 60 in 16 minutes it will be into 16 so that what we are going to get is 16 upon 40 and 16 upon 60 now since both of them are working together so how much tank is filled by both of them in 16 minutes okay very easy just add the LCM comes out to be 60 and 40 that is 120 40 into 3 so 16 into 3 is 48 and 16 into 2 16 into 2 is 32 that comes out to be uh, what is the answer over here 48 50 80 80 upon 120 42s are 43s are so two third of the tank okay two third of the tank is filled by A and B fine in 16 minutes so how much is remaining one third right total tank is one out of that two third is filled so one third remains who is going to fill this one third tank this one third tank will be filled by a plus b okay and c now over here a and b are filling the tank and c is emptying the tank so the work done by c will be subtracted now this total these three will be doing one third amount of the work okay two third is done by whom by a and b in 16 minutes okay two third of the tank is filled so one third of the tank remaining tank will be filled by all these three in 24 minutes okay so now in one minute how much amount of work is done by a 1 by 40 by b 1 by 60 and by c 1 by x y minus because c is emptying the tank all three of them are open for 24 minutes they are given so in 24 minutes work done by a is 24 by 40 by b is 24 by 60 and by c is 24 by x that will be equal to 1 by 3 now if we divide by 24 throughout what we are going to get is 1 upon 40 plus 1 upon 60 
minus 1 upon x will be equal to 1 upon 3 into 24 is 72. So 1 upon x is going to be 1 upon 40 plus 1 upon 60 plus uh, uh, minus 1 upon 72. First, I instead of taking the entire LCM, what I'm going to do is first I'll take the LCM of 40 and 60 that comes out to be 1, 8, 120. 3 plus 1 is uh, 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, minus 1 by 72. So 5 ones are 5, 24 is are. Okay, so if you try to take the LCM of 40, 60, and 720, it is going to be slightly difficult. Okay, number would be huge, but do uh, finding LCM of these two, okay, addition of these two, and then finding it for 1 by 24 and 1 by 72 is very easy. Now 1 by x will be LCM is 72. So 24 threes are so 3 minus 1 that is going to be 2 by 72 x comes out to be 36. Okay. So C amount of time well, the value of say, uh, x comes out to be 36 that is 36 minutes. Answer is option B. The standard deviation of the data given lies between. Now the formula for standard deviation is given the by this is standard deviation given by 1 upon capital N. Okay, that is the total number of values. So whatever 3, 3, 3, 9, 10. 10 values are there. So capital N is 10 over here. Summation of I equal to 1 to capital N of Xi minus mu the whole square where mu is the mean xi minus mu is the deviation this is deviation square and summation of all the deviation square now instead of remembering the formula it is much better to remember the steps okay hardly three to four steps are there and it is very very easy first step is find the mean okay second step is find the deviation because we want standard deviation so we'll find the deviation okay deviation from the mean okay then the third step is square of the deviations that we have found out Okay, square of the deviations. Then the fourth is average of these squares. Average of these squares. And the last one is the square root sign. Okay, this sign. Fine, let's first go on with the mean. What is the mean of these values? Mean is going to be very easy. Let's uh, calculate. Mean is 5 plus 7 is 12. Okay, 12. Uh, or what we'll do is we'll calculate it this way. 35 plus 5 is 40. 40 plus 20 is 60. And 13 plus 7 is 20, 60, 80, 80 and uh, 35 is 180 uh, and 35 comes out to be 115, then 121, 131, uh, 140, 150. So total summation of all the numbers is 150 divided by total numbers that is 10. So mean comes out to be 15. Now corresponding to this mean, we have to find all the deviations. Okay, so I'll erase these deviations uh, or I'll erase this part so that we can see what the deviations are let's start let's find the deviations okay from the mean 5 is how much deviant from mean or what is the deviation of 5 and 15 5 minus 15 that is minus 10 forget the minus sign okay deviations have to be positive always okay forget the minus sign or we can say we have to take a mod of the deviation okay so deviation is 10 5 to uh, 15 deviation is 10 7 to 15 deviation is 8 okay then 9 to 6, uh, 15 deviation is 6, 11 to 15 deviation is 4, 13 minus 15 it is 2, 16 minus 15 is 1, 17 minus 15 is 2, 18 minus 15 is 3, 19 minus 15 is 4 and 35 minus 15 is 20. Okay. Next is square of these deviations. It is 10 square, 8 square, 6 square, 4 square, 2 square, 1 square. 2 square, 3 square, 4 square and 20 square. So I'll write them down 100, then 64 is there, 36 is there, 16 is there, 4 is there, 1, 4, okay. And then I have 9 over here, 16 over here and 400 over here. Next is average of these squares. How to find the average of these squares? Add all of them. Now I want average, correct? So average will be adding all of them, fine, all these values. Let us see what we are going to get. And then dividing by total number of values. If you check out the total values, it is going to be n equal to 10. So divide by 10, this is going to give us the average. So average will be what? Let's see the addition. 100 plus 400 is what? 500. 64 plus 36 is 100. That is 600. 620, 640, 650. So 650 divided by 10. That comes out to be 65. Okay. This is the average. Next step is square root of this average. Square root of 65 comes out to be 8 point something. So now 
द आंसर कैन बी दिस और कैन बी दिस बट इफ यू ऑब्जर्व सिक्सटी फाइव इट इज एट स्क्वायर इज सिक्सटी फोर सिक्सटी फाइव इज इमीजिएटली द नेक्स्ट नंबर सो देर इज अ चांस दैट एट पॉइंट वन स्क्वायर कम्स आउट टू बी सिक्सटी फाइव ओके और एट पॉइंट जीरो समथिंग सो आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए सेवन पॉइंट एट एंड एट पॉइंट टू द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन लाइज बिटवीन दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ओके इट लाइज बिटवीन सेवन पॉइंट एट एंड एट पॉइंट टू X takes two and half hours more time than that taken by Y to cover a certain distance. If X doubles his speed, he can cover the same distance in one and half hours less time than that taken by Y for the same distance. How much time in hours does Y require to cover the two third of the same distance? Now let the time taken by Y, time taken by Y, okay, taken by Y. To cover the entire distance, I'm not talking about two third, okay? To cover entire distance. B T Rs. Okay, T Rs are there. Now, if you observe, X first takes 2.5 hours more, and in second case, X takes on doubling his speed, X takes one and half hour less than Y. Okay, in both the cases, the distance is same for X. In the first case, speed of X is let us say S X. Okay, distance or speed of X is less. Distance is given by what? Distance is speed into time. Speed of X is S X. Time taken by s will or uh, time taken by x will be what? 2.5 hours more than y. Y takes t hours, so it will be t plus 2.5. Okay. In the second case, speed of x is doubled. Time taken is 1.5 hours less than y. T minus 1.5. So this gets cancelled over here. What you are going to get is t plus 2.5 is going to be 2t minus 3. So t is going to be 5.5 hours. Okay. So now this is the time taken for the entire distance, but we want two third distance. So for two third distance, time taken will be two third of the original time. That is two by three into five point five. Five point five into two comes out to be eleven. Eleven by three. So three threes are nine. Two by three hours. Okay, is the answer. Answer is option A, the first one which is there. This numerical we have already seen in the previous video. Okay, the previous old sample test which had five questions, five to six questions. Check out that video for a detailed solution of this question. 